Hey guys, welcome to another Razer tutorial. Uh, this week I don't have a very planned idea in head of uh, what I want to do or what I want to teach you, but I just want to show you a patch that I made and um, show you maybe a few little tricks. That being said, need to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, like our videos and comment on the videos. Um, this stuff is really helpful and it allows us to make more videos for you. And then for this week's sound, um, what I did first, I'll play you the sound. So it's just, it's not, maybe not the most use, useful sound in the world, but I set up the macros that I talked about last week. And with these macros, we can morph the sound into something totally different. Um, first, I'll just go over quickly what I did, and then and then we're gonna look at the macros. The first step is uh, pitch down minus two octaves twenty four. Uh, we choose the formant oscillator and the Hoover oscillator, and the formant is set to uh, minus eleven minus twelve. Select is somewhere at twenty two amp all the way up, and then for the Hoover we have the uh, pulse width at thirty eight. And the amp is uh, at 0.28. And the color is a little bit up here, making this uh, oscillator a little bit brighter. Then the low pass filter is in the first filter slot. Um, make the cutoff and the boost and the width and the slope look something like this. And then I've chosen the comb peak for the second filter. Uh, tuned is turned on, which is very handy. And just make it look like this. It has a little bit of stretch, as you can see. 0.5. Then I chose the semitone spacing effect in the first slot, um, set the amount all the way down for now, the chorus in the second effect slot and I've chosen the saturator in the output effects and I only use the drive high so I'm not saturating the low frequencies just the high frequencies. Um, next I modulated the slope with LFO1 which is set to beat and it's set to a uh, saw wave and the speed is at 2 and I modulated the amount of the uh, semitone effect with LFO2 which is set to 3 and also beat and also a uh, saw wave sorry and that saw wave that allows us to get sort of the plucky sound that you hear because it's um, immediately up and then goes down, just like uh, a normal envelope would do. So that is LFO2 on the semitone, and then envelope 2 is on the pitch of the semitone effect with a full amount, and envelope 2 is listening to the echo. I think that's all I did. Yep, I have LFO1 here, but it's not used. Alright, so then we can go into the macros and um, you can see that when I, you can hear that when I turn some of these macros, the sound can totally change. I'll first demonstrate that. So there are quite some sounds hiding out in there and the cool thing is that when I drag them all down the sound becomes normal again so that way um, you never lose your initial settings. You can always get back to that. Um, so the oscillator 1 is set to the uh, formant and to the select and oscillator and they both go in a different direction. Oscillator 2 is I think only on the pulse width. Then filter 1, the cutoff goes up, the boost goes down, and the width goes up. And I can try to mess with this, maybe boost also uh, up. And maybe we can modulate the slope with that same macro. So those are quite 
some cool sounds and then for filter 2 um, this one is on the cutoff of the comb filter and the boost and boost I don't know why they call it boost I would I would have just called it resonance although this is more accurate because since it's additive synthesis it will really it will really make those harmonics louder inside the NGM but still it's, it's a bit confusing and then we have effects one which is on the semitone spacing and what the semitone spacing does it's um, it's morphing between sort of morphing I guess you could say between um, it's it's quite complicated all this stuff with the additive synthesis but it's morphing between semitone spacing in semitones and in um, and in harmonics so if I set the amount all the way up I think you will be able to hear what it does better If you set it to 12, which is in the middle here, it will be spaced in uh, an octave, 12 semitones. And you can see that right here. And then I can space them even further. So then the, uh, the harmonics are, are two octaves apart. Now all the harmonics are exactly three uh, semitones apart, which gives a really cool sound. And in the manual, it says that this um, this particular effect is great for um, this sick pitch band oscillator. If we choose that here, because this pitch band oscillator can sound a little bit aggressive. If I turn everything off for now. can get uh, pretty extreme and quite high but then you can use this semitone effect to um, dim it down a little bit so maybe first we set it to 12 so one octave Yeah, that works quite well on this oscillator. Maybe with the low pass filter. And then instead of the chorus, choose the reverb. And that movement, the plug is, is because of the LFO on, on the slope. You can see that right here. And with the attack and decay parameters, we can smooth out that modulation. And with this, I experienced that with this low pass filter, and actually with most of stuff of the stuff in Razer, you have to be a little bit careful tweaking stuff because there can be a, a lot of sounds into one tiny um, area of the of these cutoff knobs and, and all the other knobs so the semitone effect uh, works great on the sick pitch band and there are uh, a few other combinations of effects and oscillators that work uh, pretty well um, for example, one other one is um, the Hoover, where is it, that one, disable the low pass again. To really make a Hoover sound, um, we have to choose the chorus here. of Lopez without the LFO please so this 
way you can make those classic drum and bass hoover sounds. <laughs> And then maybe with a fast unsynced LFO, so the two sign and give it a little bit of movement on the cutoff. <laughs> And then maybe try, let's do the centroid effect, which is quite extreme, but I like it. Or we could try maybe the um, metal would work well on this. And then modulate it with uh, LFO2. That one. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you for this week. I think this tutorial was more about the combination of um, oscillators and effects. And there are a lot of tips for this inside the manual. So if you check that out, you will find new, uh, more awesome combinations. And uh, I think next week we're going to try and make some, what should we do, more aggressive sounds maybe. But give me, just write in the YouTube comments what you want to see uh, for the tutorial. And I will try to make a video about that. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next week.